she's asking him if he's eaten breakfast and he's like yeah I had cookies and meat for breakfast it was really good and she's like do you mean Oreos and Bud Light? <laughs> Did you have that for breakfast? And he goes, the fare was delicious. I ate, st <laughs> sorry, I ate whilst watching Sesame Street on the picture box. Today I learned the letter X with Bert and Ernie. I've decided X is the best letter in your alphabet. Indeed, my favorite word has the letter X in it. <laughs> Hey y'all, what's up? My name is Avery and this is my dedicated reading vlog for The Last Viking by Sandra Hill. So if you didn't know, I'm starting a series on my channel where once a month I will be doing a dedicated reading vlog for a book that I pick out of my TBR jar. And you find out which book that is every single month by looking at my Instagram stories. Um, I post there, I believe like the last day of the month before the new month or the first day of the new month. I don't really remember. It's either the 30th or 31st or like first of the next month. So um, this was the book that I picked and this is a romance about Vikings, I'm pretty sure. Let's read the summary together. How about that? He was six feet, four inches of pure, unadulterated male. He wore nothing but a leather tunic, spoke in an ancient tongue, and he was standing in Professor Meredith Foster's living room. The medieval historian told herself that he was part of a practical joke but with his wide gold belt, calloused hands, and the rabbit roasting in her fireplace, the brawny stranger seemed so authentic. Suddenly, Meredith was mesmerized by his bronzed, muscular form, and her body surrendered to the fantasy that Grolf Erickson really was a Viking from a thousand years ago, sent only to pleasure her. But as she tried to teach him to eat spaghetti and use the computer, she realized he knew an awful lot about the 10th century, and so little about the 20th. And as he helped her fulfill her grandfather's dream of recreating a Viking ship, he awakened her to dreams of her own, until she wondered if the hand of fate had thrust her into the loving arms of the last Viking. So I didn't know that this also is like, takes place in modern day. That's cool. I thought it was maybe a historic romance where there's Vikings, but it turns out like a Viking gets put into our time period, which sounds really fun. This like gives me a lot of fantasy lover vibes. If you read that book, 387 pages in a mass market paperback. So I don't think it's that long. Um, I got this at a thrift store a while ago. It looks like like something like cut it. If you can like see, like some of the edge, some of the pages are like cut into, which is very strange. Um, but I'm very excited. Oh my gosh, I want to read you the little. There's like a little like preview of a section in the book. The title says, A Stunning Surprise. I don't know how to pronounce his name. Gilrolf? Giralf? Giralf? Giralf. I think maybe it's that Giralf. Giralf dropped his loincloth. Mary Death's green eyes just popped out of her head. She made a low strangling sound in her throat. He chuckled with satisfaction. Twas the reaction of most women on first viewing his man parts. Gods had been generous with him in that regard. Oh my gosh. You, you, she sputtered as he swaggered past her and through the open door. He kept his pace deliberately slow, shoulders back, so she could get a good look. Mayhap now she would appreciate the honor he bestowed in taking her as a bedmate. Come back here, she shrieked like a banshee, and put your clothes back on. Okay, I'm very excited. That little scene was so funny. Okay, I'm so excited for this. Um, I haven't really heard anything um, about this from any of my friends, um, so I'm very excited. I have not found the audiobook, so I think I'm just gonna read it physically, which might be a challenge for me because I haven't read a physical book in over two months. And it's kind of like a challenge for me right now. So um, we'll see how I do, but I'm very excited. Okay, I've started it and I'm only on page three, but I needed to say something because it's really funny. So the like first page of this book is like about like our, what is his name? I can't ever say it. Geroif, Gerolf, there you go. I'm gonna say Gerolf. Um, so it starts out with Gerolf. His ship is sinking, and he's like holding on to this woman for dear life and burying his face like in her chest, basically. <laughs> like the first two pages, you're thinking this is an actual woman he's holding on to. He had to go overboard with, like he's holding on to this woman. Turns out, um, no, uh, his brother <laughs> either made him or sent him like the chest, 
like the waist up like wooden sculpture of a woman as like a joke i'm pretty sure like, the first two pages i thought this was an actual woman and then it's like oh yeah this no this is a wooden sculpture that he's like holding on to for dear life in the middle of the ocean just like a woman's chest he's just holding on to a wooden carving of a woman's chest to help him stay afloat in the ocean Hello, okay, so I am about to hit page 100 of The Last Viking by Sandra Hill. I'm on page 95, chapter five. So the chapters in this book are quite long, which is something I normally despise in books, but for this one, it being a mass market paperback and it being highly entertaining, I don't even mind. Like I'll look back on the page after I've been reading for a little bit and I'll like, already have read 10 pages without thinking about it and so I really like that aspect so I am thoroughly enjoying this so I'm I'm like thinking that I update you possibly every 100 pages I think it's like 380 something pages 360 something pages I have no idea but um this one is actually not a historical romance this really reminds me of fantasy lover by Sherilyn Kenyon and the fact that like it's a guy from olden era he's from the year 997 and he gets transported into the year 1997 so he time travels a thousand years into the future and so he gets in a shipwreck he ends up washing on shore of this cliffside and there's this cabin there that he um, just walks into and turns out our heroine Meredith lives in that cabin he like has this magical talisman that his dad has like tasked him to bring to london and so we're pretty sure that's probably the thing that made him jump in time meredith is i believe is a professor and she's been working um on her late grandfather he was a shipbuilder before he died she like promised him that she would finish his like viking ship for him he was trying to make an original viking ship or follow the bl blueprints of an original viking sailing ship rolf who's our hero here um he gets transported in time it turns out he is like a viking ship maker like that's his job way back in the year 997 so um that's pretty cool sorry if the lighting's just weird the sun just came out this is so entertaining and fun because he's from the year 997 and he gets sucked into 1997 <laughs> and this is also fun because i don't want a lot of books set that takes place in the 90s and like I was a I was born the year after this book was set in so I personally don't have a lot of experience in the 90s um, I was born in 98 so I personally don't remember anything that happened in that time period so I really like reading about this um, like they're talking about computers and cell phones and he's like what the heck is that magic witch box you're holding it's really funny reading his pronunciations of like names like Meredith is like my name is Meredith like that's my name and he like in the book the way that he thinks of her name her name is Mary death like it's spelled like merry christmas mary dash death <laughs> like that's how he pictures her name <laughs> um so her name is mary death not meredith because <laughs> he does he's never heard the name meredith before so that's pretty funny and he just pronounces funny words like that like he pronounced computer like come like come here and then the sh like the shade or the metal pewter um so computer <laughs> oh my gosh there's a butterfly hello butterfly can you see? Maybe you can't see, there's a butterfly. So I'm very much enjoying this. There are so many funny parts that I, I don't have my sticky tabbies with me right now, but I've been like writing them down. And one that is the funniest. I love his reaction to food in this time period because um, like the first night that he was there, she had spaghetti, she made spaghetti. And like he ended up finding like a rabbit before she even like came home and started a fire and put it on her fireplace. And he's like, that's my dinner. I cook a rabbit. And she's like freaking out that there's a rabbit on her <laughs> fireplace. But she makes herself spaghetti and he's like, ooh, can I try some? And she's like, sure. And he calls them worms. And he's like, those worms taste gross. And she's like, they're not actually worms. It's pasta. And he doesn't know what pasta is. <laughs> and then my favorite so far is on page like 91 she makes like grilled cheese and tomato soup and she puts the bowl of soup in front of him and he like screams he goes blood soup <laughs> and she's like it's not blood it's tomatoes and he's like those are someone's toes <laughs> and then she's like no it's from a vegetable very funny very funny i am thoroughly enjoying this i am like also like just flying through it and i 
I'm having so much fun. I am loving this. Yeah, it reminds me of Fantasy Lover also because there's a lot of talk about Norse mythology and Norse gods and so that's pretty fun. But like they're talking about Thor and Odin and stuff that I learned from watching the Avengers. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, I find that very entertaining. I feel like she's done a lot of research about the subject, which is amazing. So I'm gonna continue reading and I will update you later. Okay, so I'm not at the 200 page mark yet. I'm only at page 133, but I just wanna pop on here for literally a quick minute because I realized what this book reminds me of. I was trying to figure out what this book reminds me of and like what our hero Rolf reminds me of. He's like Thor from like Thor, like the Avengers Thor, like the first Thor. Like that's who he reminds me of. Like he's big and burly and kind of misogynistic um, and doesn't know the way of the world, doesn't know the time period and the technology and is a snarky and very um, arrogant. <laughs> he follows the same mythology and everything and he reminds me of Thor from like the Avengers. So I just wanted to let you know if you want a book um, kind of like Thor, this one's it, but not like really. It's like kind of like the hero is like Thor. He even like looks like him. I am picturing him as Chris Hemsworth. Like that's who Rolf is to me in this book. It is just Chris Hemsworth. <laughs> Y'all, this book is cracking me up. Like. La belly laughing. There's a scene where everyone wakes up in the morning and Rolf's already been awake and um, he ends up waking her up at 6 a.m. She's asking him if he's eaten breakfast and he's like, yeah, I had cookies and mead for breakfast. It was really good. And she's like, do you mean Oreos and Bud Light? <laughs> Did you have that for breakfast? And he goes, the fare was delicious. I ate... <laughs> Sorry, I ate whilst watching Sesame Street on the picture box. Today I learned the letter X with Bert and Ernie. I've decided X is the best letter in your alphabet. Indeed, my favorite word has the letter X in it. Oh my gosh. This man is cracking me up. This book is cracking me up. It is hilarious. It is so funny. I am loving it. Okay, I think you can hear. Like the geese, I think they're geese migrating or something. Cause I just hear geese flying. Um, and I also hear construction in the next house over. So excuse me about that. But I have finally reached the 200 page mark of The Lost Viking by Sandra Hill. This book is just making me cackle like all the time. Rolf is really making me laugh, really funny. Um, They haven't like gotten together yet, but they have been like, little scenes here and there which I don't know how I feel about the scenes because the scenes always get a little like interrupted I feel like the author is just like purposefully making us like wait and wait and wait and wait till they get together but I don't know that's kind of just what a romance book is if you think about it so I don't really know how I think about that I will say something that is bu not bugging me but I'm really confused of is like I obviously was not born yet in 1997 when this is when this takes place. Um, I was born a year later, so um, I don't really know the uh, celebrities that these people are talking about because they talk about some celebrities in here and I, I don't I don't know them. <laughs> so some of it's just going, going over my head. Um, like I could look them up, you know, but like it still doesn't like have the same like, like probably just doesn't affect me as much as somebody who is probably older than me who reads this book, who knows who those people are and was like alive when those people were celebrities. I will say her sister in here or her family in general just sucks. Her family in general sucks. They are horrible pieces of poop and we haven't even met all of them yet. Um, we've only met the par her parents over the phone and they are horrible people. And her brother is apparently not good as well. Haven't really met him yet though, only talked to him on the phone. And then her sister, her sister is a piece of poo. Her sister is a piece of poo. She was also just like, like she has a 14 year old daughter named Thea. I love her. She's really sweet. She's a young kid. She kind of just like leaves it to, um, Meredith to take care of her which is ridiculous that's your kid take responsibility for your own kid I think when like Thea gets like introduced into this book she's 14 years old and so Meredith's, sis Meredith's sister's name is Jillian Meredith was asking Thea oh how's your mom and and Thea's like oh Jillian's fine this 14 year old girl's not calling her mom Meredith's like why are you calling her Jillian and not mom and she's like, oh, because she asked me to. She doesn't want me to call her mom. Like, are you serious? Are you serious? Anyway, that really bugged me. And just like, Jillian's like a horrible person. She knows that Meredith and um, Rolf have 
the hots for each other and really like each other and um she goes in to make moves on him like that's how meredith's like ex-husband he left her to go like to be with another woman and got that other woman pregnant because meredith can't have kids and so like her ex-husband cheated on her and that's why they're not together anymore so meredith w <gasps> this bee won't leave me alone <laughs> So I'm just gonna hurry up. Okay, Meredith was thinking about it. She's like, if if Jillian made like moves on Rolf, she probably also made the moves on my ex-husband. And like Rolf was saying, Rolf was just like, I want to. If she was a man, I would beat her up. Something that's making me laugh is his all like misogynistic comments. He's like, um, <laughs> he loves um this uh hardware show. He's loves this hardware show. He likes building stuff, and so he thinks this again. I don't know celebrities in this time period. Anyway, he's just saying how he idolizes this man and he's like, oh, he should be what every man strives to be, like this guy on a hardware TV show that he likes. <laughs> and so um, Meredith's like, well, who would be the woman equivalent then? If you've been watching so much TV, who would be the woman equivalent that all women should strive to be? And she, he's like, Martha Stewart, obviously. And so that's one I do know. And so that one made me laugh. Yeah, I'm really enjoying this. Um, it's just taking me a while to like, get into or like read it's been a while since i've started this book just because i've been really bad at physically reading books like it it takes a lot out of me to physically read a book nowadays and uh i don't have it in audio form so um something that i did want to show you that i thought was really funny so a lot of the time in like the older historical romances they have like like an ad in the book where um in the center of the book there's like oh here sign up for this and you can get like a subscription service or whatever to this company and so here's like the ad picture right of a historical romance and it's of a historical romance I already own it's the magic and like here I already have this book so there you go this one is a pirate romance so anyway I'm really enjoying this on page 202 I'm I might finish it today I don't know it's Thanksgiving today so um, we will, we will see. Okay, so I am on page 307 of The Last Viking. Um, I only have 80 pages left exactly. My dog is crying. What's new? Come here! So, yeah, 307 of this, exactly 80 pages left. I honestly don't know what to think about this book anymore. Um, it took kind of a turn. I really liked, like, the first half and the middle of it. Um, it was really funny, really sweet and cute, and just like, the past couple, like, 50 pages haven't really been my favorite thing ever. Um, there was this, like, mystery thing that happened for a second, and then that got resolved really quick, and then, I don't know if it's dubious consent or not consent, but there's just a thing where, like, the hero wants to get married to this woman, and she keeps saying, like, no, I'm not going to get married to you because you won't take me back in time with you because he thinks it'll be too dangerous for her. And so she's like, I'm not going to marry you unless you agree to take me with you. And he's like, oh, we'll see about that. And um, he does things that she, I don't know if it's like dubious consent or not consent at all. I don't really know. They don't, they don't do anything because he's like, I won't do stuff with you until we're married because I love you. And so it's not like that kind of stuff, but he does things that she doesn't really agree with or consent to. And I don't really know how I feel about that. Even though like you can read her in a monologue and she's like, I don't really want this, but I love him. And so I'm just kind of confused when it comes to all of that. I'm kind of nervous to read the next part of the book. I don't really know how I feel about this now, because I was loving it. I was loving it. And now it's more of like a three star because of that whole issue or those whole issues. I don't know, maybe somebody else can read this and like tell me what you think about it because I'd love to know someone else's opinion on this. Um, I don't know anybody else who's read this book. I have 80 pages left, so I'll let you know what I think when I'm finished. I have finished The Last Viking by Sandra Hill. I think I might give it 3.5 out of 5 stars. This was like going towards a 4.5 or a 5 at the beginning. It was so funny, so entertaining, and then like the last third of it just wasn't it for me. There's also, if you don't want to be spoiled for one itty bitty thing in here, maybe skip ahead like 30 seconds or something I don't know but like there's that whole thing 
of um, a woman being infertile and um, she just miraculously gets pregnant. And um, I don't like that in books because I know people and I'm friends with people who struggle to become pregnant and it's not just a miracle thing most of the time. And um, I feel like that kind of like discounts people who have struggled with infertility. It would have been so much better or it would have been so much more realistic to me and not offensive if like she just didn't have her be pregnant after all this. Yeah, there's that whole um, thing about the consent thing. I don't really know. It's probably the time that it was written in 1997. People just didn't really worry about writing about stuff like that, I guess. I don't know. I haven't really read all that many books that are were written before the 1990s um, or 1995, 1997, whatever. But I have like, for example, like I watched like um, Jess from Peace of Books, she read uh, Johanna Lindsay. I believe it was written in like the 80s. And she was talking about how there was like a consent issue in that book too. So maybe it's like just like the time period this was written in that like, I don't know, they didn't really think about stuff like that, um, which is kind of sad. If you want to read this book, I say go ahead. Um, I want to know your thoughts about all of this and if you think the same way I do. Overall, I really I really liked Rolf when um, he wasn't being misogynistic. Um, and I felt like he grew throughout the book, and so I really liked that. Um, I didn't really like the ending with him and his whole thing. I wish there was more about that. Um, I don't want to spoil anything. Um, and then Meredith, <laughs> Meredith, Meredith. I really liked watching her grow through all this because she ended up growing too, but um, man, was this woman stubborn. Stubborn, stubborn, stubborn. <laughs> So I think I'm just gonna give this a 3.5 out of 5 stars. It would have been so much better if the last third of this book was amazing because the first part was so stinking good and so stinking funny. I don't know, I might pick up another Sandra Hill if I ever come in contact with another one of her books or come across one of her books. I finally get to put this book down. I've been reading it for weeks because I'm just having trouble with reading physical books at the moment. So I'm really glad I got this book out of the way. So that is the first book done for my challenge for myself where I read a physical book for my TBR jar once a month and do a re dedicated reading vlog for it. So please let me know down below if you have read this book or if you plan to. I'd love to know and if you do end up reading it, please let me know. I want to talk to you about this book. I'd love to know your thoughts about this book. But anyways, thank y'all so, so much for watching. I'll see y'all soon in my next one. Bye!